All right, guys, so before we start episode 14 of Ask Woodford, I've got a very, very special guest with me. He's from all the way from the UK, Owen Walker. And before I introduce him, Owen owns Science, science yeah. of Sport. Am I correct in saying that? No, Science for Sport. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked it up. You killed me already. I've already yeah, fucked it up already. Yeah, so Science for reshoot. Sport. No, we don't reshoot here, mate. This is pure <laughs> raw, raw. So um, I first, Owen added me a while back and just talk shit like most people do on my Facebook, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Is that you mess with me? I think yeah, more I think I was in the area when I, and I, I just think said, oh, yeah, yeah. pay a little visit up to you. Come and see what, what he's about. Tell us what got going on. Uh, and um, um, he came in today, so I finally met the man. So we've been talking good shop. It's always good to talk to someone who A, is a passionate, passionate about sports science, B, passionate about raising the stand, and someone who actually owns a business as well and can understand the yeah, fucking yeah. up and downs of a business. So um, I just thought I'd just talk to Owen just quickly before we get Brent on for the Ask Woodford show. Um, just about, you know, for everyone out there who don't, doesn't know about your, your website and what you do, just kind of give a little bit of um, a background of how you kind of started and what, what it's about. Yeah, so... The condensed version. The condensed version. Basically, yeah. like everyone starting in the industry, I went to a go-to, where is there? You go online, there was nothing. I went to teenationbodybuilding.com when I was learning and, you know, it's, it's not really for us. So... Is that it? Yeah. That's the one, yeah. You're going to look. I see it's looking flat. It's doing all right. Yeah, nice. I'm my Instagram now. Yeah, so I started out, I wanted to build the bridge between the practice and the science. That, that was it. Like, there's, too, there's so much. People, I started working for a club with GPS going on, all things like that, Osmo testing. And, um, and no one really understood the application of it and how to actually critique it, whether it was any good, whether it was valid. So I wanted to build this bridge between the two. And that's still what I'm working on at the minute, you know, like the website's taken off. Christian's going back through all the old posts. Oh, I'm just looking at all your posts right now. They're pretty good. Seeing how much, um, much I'm putting so out. So how much of it is you just posting or do you have a team working with you? Yeah, so I've actually got a team. So me and a, me and a group of editors, a um, number of different guys. There's 11 of them total. Um, we started doing a research digest. So every month we find the most, uh, like the latest and best sports science research relating oh, to SNC and nutrition and stuff. And so I've got guys from, say, Glasgow Warriors, Blackburn Rovers, GWS Giants. You Who's know, from the Giants do you have? Uh, Lachlan Wilmot oh. and Dean Norris. Two oh, nice. big guns, strength and power coaches. Um, and yeah, so they do the AFL section and we review the research, pump out monthly digest, to keep everyone up to date on what's going on, you know, whether it's something that's just been published on compression garments or like GPS or what else. What else we got? Um, so last month was sled sprinting, you know, which which um, loads best to optimize power output. For what, what did they find? In that? Um, eighty percent body mass. So which is which is completely different to what they used to say that stupid ten percent rule. Yeah, yeah. And if, so, you, if you think about it, Joe DeFranco <laughs> was doing that. If you want to take Joe in here, Joe, I know you watch these videos, mate. Don't worry about that. Yeah. But Joe was doing that for years, and that's how I started doing that heavy sled push, heavy prowler push, stuff like that. Sleds, yeah. you know. It, it makes sense. It's all coming out of the back of it. Like that, that paper was Matt Cross um, yeah. from New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, there's a few, they've got a good little team going on. And mm. yeah, they're basically just uncovering it in a minute because it's always been like 20. Yeah, it's like, 10% Don't go anywhere because they changed the technique. Yeah, so yeah. Um, basically, the, the change in attitude looking at heavy loaded, you know, for yeah. developing acceleration. Where do, you, where do you want the website to go? Um, the, the grand vision is to be the number one sports science and medicine. Um, platform so you, if you're any of those two and you want to learn about if you're just getting into industry you want to learn yeah. about how to use sleds yeah. or GPS or um, ACL rehabilitation you go there and there's everything you have big conferences worldwide um, online courses and stuff like that so yeah I've got big visions for it but as everything as you know it's time and it time takes time, time and effort, and effort. And ups and downs and doing your own business yeah so I think uh, I've pull got, your hair out there after day, so. I think that's the biggest thing is just the thing is, which people don't understand, especially when you start something new that was never done before. You just said that was the thing, you know. So <laughs> someone's really put it together. Yeah, it's 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 not easy. It take, you got to put your heart into it every day. It's like up and down. Do I want to do this? Do I not want to do it? I mean, you go through every emotion in the sun. But I've got respect for you being young. And you know, as I said to you before, when I was talking to you, I think that you remind me of me when I took probably a year into Woodford, where you kind of like fuck, you know, it's really happening now. It's like yeah. legit. So. <laughs> You know, you've, you've moved, obviously days. you've moved around the corner to, to Morty Alex, so I'll probably be seeing you a lot more. So I think you've, you know, what I've, what you've kind of told, but you've got, you know, you, you've got, you're in the right direction. But like anything, man, exactly what you see, hitting the nail on the head takes effort and hard work. And 
if you stick at it, it will happen. But you've got some good people around. And everything you. you've learned um, through this Sports by Science and all your education, what do you think is like one of the biggest misnomers that you've That's found a big comes? word for you, mate. Yeah, You're trying yeah. to sound smart. Can you, can you how clarify the definition? Well, it's... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he's done it. I think, I think he's asking because he doesn't think? know. Oh, you do? do you he know? knows what it is. What's yeah. a mis- what, what is it? What's the definition of a mystery? It's like the oh, it's, it's, it's if your interview is asking you questions, he's got to know. What yeah, you got to know what it's like. I know what you're saying. It's like he knows it. It's more the fact you. I don't know what it is. Fuck. Um, what is it, Alex? Because you've really screwed yourself over now. So now the question's back on me. You know, one of those words you can't define, but you understand the concept. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those words. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is, what are one of the biggest things? Fallacies. Is, Fallacies. Yeah. That basically, everybody thinks and it's not. That's not right. Is that what you're saying? Essentially. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> millions of them. mate. Uh, tr- altitude go? mass trains yeah. at altitude. You get altitude benefits. That's a first. <laughs> yeah. We, let's not even go there. About altitude mass. I'm, I'll get an article to you soon about that one. Just. Bear with me for now, you know. Um, <laughs> all right, let's let's have a look. Just because me and Christian were talking about it before, is a classic. Measuring thirty to forty meters split using <laughs> time and gates. What are you measuring? Top end. Top end what? Speed. Top end speed. All right. So if, and bear in mind, I'm using time and gates. So you're using a sample of one basically from thirty meters to forty meters. They cross the gate there to there over a ten meter period. There, thirty meters to forty meters is ten meter, and you're taking an average. What happens if their peak velocity occurred at 33 meters and then they just slowed down after that? Questions on you. What happens if their peak velocity occurred at 33 meters? Yeah. They're, 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 they're just useless. decelerating. At then, that point. Yeah, they're decelerating basically. So, or they're just maintaining. So, you're not measuring peak velocity because all you're doing is smoothing the data between the 30 to 40 meters. You're taking an average speed of 30 to 40 meters. Right. You're not measuring peak velocity. Simple as that. And even what, even if they hit their peak velocity at 41 meters, you missed it. So your issue is in the measuring top end speed? That's, that's your issue you have? Well, yeah, it? there's an example. If you're using time and gates, yeah. 30 meters and 40 meters to measure top speed, technically you're not hitting it. How would you best um, set out the time and gates or best plan it to measure Radar that? guns or video. That, now that, oh, that's a big thing because every single AFL club yeah, that's really interesting uses time and gates. Exactly. So you're pretty much saying what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. Well, ah, uh, but stand up for what you believe yeah, in now. Not, don't bitch out now. <laughs> yeah. You can't don't say call on this show <laughs> and we're doing a call out and you can't, mate, no, look no, down the barrel, down the camera, have some well. balls and say, you're saying right now, and I'm putting this in your words, time and gates are a load of fucking shit. Yes or no? Answer the question. And it's not as simple as that question. Yes, it is. It's On this show, it is. I, I ask him. I'm a simplistic man. All right, give it, give it a closer definition. Okay, Timing okay. gates are bullshit. Timing gates are bullshit for 30 to 40 meters to t- to quantify top end speed. Yes or no? Yeah, bullshit. Well, that's funny because a lot of a lot of clubs would use them. So there we go. So you're saying radar gun or video? Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, well, there we go, guys. Bang, you heard it first on the Ask Woodford show. Have you put a paper out on that or what? Oh, mate, I'm literally, I reckon I'll write it this week or next week, yeah. So I'm going to do the relative age effect, I reckon, next. Like, it's just, I've just finished VBT. Right. For anyone who doesn't know, it's velocity-based training. Oh, right, so I'm going to drop, I don't know, maybe in a couple of weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I did coaching cues, external, attentional focus for anyone. Brett Bartholomew was my uh, reviewer on it. He come on and, and had a read-through and told me what he thought. Um, and yeah, so what kind of cues you use, you know, explode through the floor, drive out, or whether you're using extended hips and blah, blah, you know, internal versus external cues. That's the one I'll probably drop it on Sunday for anyone who wants a pleasure here. Yeah. But you were finding, I guess, that external cues much more effective? Yeah, yeah, basically for pretty much everything, you know, whether it's jumping to the line and standing broad jump, whether it's speed, whether it's accelerating out the blocks, external cues work more because internal cues, um, almost, and I'm not going to say it does particularly, but the belief is that it distracts the athlete by like by making them focus on internal um, mechanics, basically. So try to focus on ex- exploding at the hips and keeping the keeping the spine straight. So it causes a confusion and them to think internally rather than just thinking about the task in hand and the task orientation from here to there as quick as possible or as explosively as possible. I think it's yeah. super important for so many coaches because I don't think many coaches, especially when they're young, don't really think yeah. about that, how important their type of cueing is. I don't know, he, uh, Christian. He's got um, good cues or what? Well, he'll, 
I don't know if he does it on purpose, but like naturally he'll use a lot of external cues. Yeah. Um, or just experience. Yeah, experience tells you what. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, what is doing? I don't even know why. I, and I said this to someone before From yesterday. Fatigue, he just fucking does. Yeah. Yeah, I just do it. Well, you just kind of. My thing's always been I learn on by doing, not yeah. you know what I mean. I'm I'm like that, and um, the more times I do something, I see a pattern. I think what's worked for me it doesn't always work. You know, it doesn't always work for everyone. But I use I have certain cues that I go to that works, and it works so far. And the more times I do something, it's called experience trumps all in my opinion. Yeah, you need knowledge. Knowledge is the base level. What do I call knowledge? Out. It's the the foundation. Death, the foundation. You cannot build a house without what foundation. So I use the same thing with my fucking athletes. I was like. It's like my athletes come in, they'll be like, I want to do that. I'm like, well, if you don't have a fucking base, it's not going to be maximized by doing that stuff. You have to have the base first, that's the foundation. And I always say, can you build a house? And they always say at the end, yes, we've heard this saying. I said, well, I don't need to explain it to you again, we need that foundation. So I think that external cues and how to cue people is an art within itself. What, 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 do, what do you need to say and when to fix that biggest issue, what they're yeah. doing? It might be... The perfect one for me, perfect example would be anyone who's doing Olympic lifting, right? Let's say Olympic lifting variants, because I'm a big variant guy. I don't think you, need, you don't need a front rack when you're clean. You don't need catching a hand coin pull, hand coin high pull, rack pull, something like that, um, where you jump. Perfect thing when you're coaching on a frontal plane on a side view, and they're doing cleans and they're not snapping the hips through, you're not getting triple extension. The whole idea where you do Olympic lifting is ground based packs, explosive hip extension, triple extension of the hip, knee, and ankle. And the thing is, when they do it, they muscle up. I'm like, well, you're not doing it right. Oh, but fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm catching the bar. I said, well, the fucking whole reason why you do it is that neural patterning, that triple extension, and your hips through. Yeah. So why are you doing it then? Oh, but I lifted it. But the, in the gate, the whole reason why you're doing it, everything is, is, is neural, neurologically based for me because that's my background. So it, it's just, everything downstairs is training. I talk about this a lot on the show. is training a neural pattern, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Where people get so confused because <laughs> it's lifting heavy weight. It's like fucking, they're throwing the weight on the ground. It's like, well, Everything down says has to have a reason for transference. We're not going to get 100% transference because the only way we're going to get transference is playing the sport. I know that. But as long as you can justify why you do what you do and you use a bit of science and art and you get results, you're fine. That's how I believe anyway. And the cue, the cues, the more times I've done this, the better I keep getting at it and I just work on cues and I'm a big quality man, not a quantity. So I just feel like cueing is a big one. And Alex talks about this actually. You bring this up all the time about cueing and what are the best cues to use for A, B, and C? And you know, it's good that you know you always want to learn about that stuff. I think, I think what what works for me might not always work for you, but it's always good that you're asking and want to get to know. And it's a, it is that individual aspect as well. Like you said, it comes down to experience. You know, not every cue is going to work for every person. Correct. Not, not always external cues are going to work. You know, sometimes mm. an internal cue. I had a coach the other day, um, young guy, so not tons of experience, but still enough. And he he reckons, uh, at least from his experience, that. I think it was the netball girls he works with yeah. always responded really well to internal cues rather than external. Oh, really? Matter of experience, maybe the whole multitude of factors can come in there, but you never know, yeah. So, yeah, experience and knowing your context is the important thing, do you know what I mean? You know, who you're working with. Con- where, how how big is context? Fucking yeah, everything. Huge. Context yeah. is everything. I- and I, yeah, and the thing is, when you see a video, you need context. And I'm not the greatest because I kind of go on tangents and. Like when I see a soccer video and they're on BOSU balls and doing anything specific, I understand there's context to that. But your a skill session is a skill session. That's what you do skills for. Physical prep preparation is not a skill session. It's a physical preparation session. So yes, you need context, but it's like the perfect one would be example, like an athlete doing a quarter squat. Now, for everyone else, they'll look at that and go, that's not arse to grass, that's wrong. But if you get context on it, they might have an FAI. They might be coming back from some sort of pathology. We don't know, but you need... And also, now that research has come out and showed quarter squats versus half squats versus full Luke, squats... Strength is specific, right? So exactly. those two transference. Whether you're in a general or specific phase, mm-hmm. and yeah, like a special phase, like just comes down to that. It comes down to context. Context. Right? You might do a full range in the pre-season, at the start mm. of the pre-season, free range back squat, mm. all right, work through the full motion. And as you then get closer towards the competition, mm. or like the start of the season, depends what you, obviously sport you're working in, mm. the context, then you might just decrease the range of movement mm. to make it more specific. So mm. the context fits the sport, the time, yeah. everything else, you know, the athlete. The athlete. I mean, the thing is, people try to pigeonhole this industry. You've got to do that, you've got to do that. No, you don't. Like when I first started this industry, I used to think you have to always you have to always back squat people, and then I realised well, there's a number of squats you can do. You don't have to do back squat, front squat, goblet squat, zercher squat. You can choose a squat based on their their training status, their chronological age, <laughs> their somatotype, their previous history. Tick 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 tick. Use what works for that athlete. Now, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. 
you're around this area, obviously. So yeah, like, are you living here now? Away, so I'm like, yeah, Mordial just moved in there, so all sorted. Got a nice little place, windows overlooking the beach. Mm. Beautiful. <clears throat> and yeah, all set up. So mm. that should be me now. If someone, if someone out there wants to contact you for any link ups, collaborations, where do they go? What yeah, they so do? I mean, you can send us a direct message. Go to scienceforsport.com. Um, all one word. Send them an email. Send up me an email straight through there, or you can get me on Facebook, Owen Walker, um, or through my Instagram, Twitter feeds, which are Science for Sport. You know, we've got a good following already. With Christians back in, I'm sure, in support on this one. It's going to blow up now. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can reach out to me. Yeah. Come and get me. <laughs> chuck me a question if you want. Um, the reason I'm here in the first place is because one of Christian's guys reached out to me today. Who and, was that? Um, Jared. Jared. Oh, yeah. I felt so bad. I spoke, spoke to him randomly. What a prick I am, man. Eh? <laughs> yeah, don't get yeah. back. Yeah, he, he, he don't get back to you. If you're going to reach out to him. Oh, I'm probably. Uh, you ask, if you ask my staff, I can barely sit time. down. <laughs> He's too big time. He's I've got, got his own Gary V show now. I'm presenting. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, don't even I know. felt bad. Jared goes, oh, do you know what I got called? Oh, Walker. Like, oh, shit. I said, tell him to come down. Yeah, I apologise. Um, yeah, so reach out to him. Look, I, anything in the industry that wants to raise, I think it's a good thing. And you and I talked about this before. I think you really really summed it up nicely when you said you want to bridge the gap between the science and the application, which I think is great because that's what you know. I'm trying to do. You're trying to do. You know, you're the knowledge part of it. You get the science of it on the physical side of it. So I think it's it's fucking great. So you've done a real good job, kid. And I'm yeah, saying, kid, because yeah. I am older than you. I'm four years <laughs> old. Yeah, I feel like an old man. So especially when you know guys like him are 22, 21, and yeah, I feel yeah. like an old man. I've been in this industry since I was 18, so not 18, 19. So fuck, I'm old. Yeah, I'm old. And you enjoying it? Still enjoying it? I oh, do, yeah, man. That's the most important thing. Yeah, that's the thing to learn. Yeah, it's important. Passion. Things, so yeah. Enjoy the industry. And, yeah. yeah, like I did as well. Well, I said I did. I do. You still so, do. Yeah, yeah like, still... definitely. So I just want to, like you said, I want to build a bridge, and mm-hmm. that's it. Because it's too much. Just you go for uni, bread, and you haven't got the practical side of it. Yeah. And then. Um, I yeah, think you get with science. I, I think the, the the conclusion would be, I would just enjoy what you do. It's a great industry. Be passionate, enjoy it, and enjoy the ride. Because if you own a business like us, it's up down, up down, up down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you own your own business, you know exactly what we're talking about. It's yeah. like a roller coaster. Well, um, thank you for coming on the yeah. Ask Woodford. I expect a share on science for sport. I'll pump Science of Sport up if you're, if you're following this Science of Sport. Like the page, follow Owen's journey, and he'll annoy you with questions probably like he <laughs> Yeah, I'm kidding. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate uh, it. No problem. Good man. Thank you. Pleasure. Good man. See you.